front of hypocrisy. The devotional reading is going to be 1 Samuel chapter 15, 19 through 23. And the background scripture is Luke 11, verses 37 through 44. I'm going to read Luke 11, 37 and 38. And as he spake, a certain Pharisee besought him to dine with him. And he went in and sat down to meet. And when the Pharisee saw it, he marveled that he had not first washed before dinner. Amen. To him, now do ye Pharisees make clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but your inward part is full of ravening and wickedness. Amen. 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 11:39 Nhưng Chúa bảo ông ta, người Pharisi các ông chỉ hay rửa bên ngoài chén bia, nhưng bên trong các ông lại đầy dẫm sự gian ác và trộm cướp. Amen. Luke 11 verse 40. Ye fools, did not he that make that which is without make that which is within also. 41. But rather give alms of such things as ye have, and behold, all things are clean unto you. Amen. 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 42. But woe unto you, Pharisees, for ye tie mint and root and all manner of herbs, and pass over judgment and the love of God. These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Sitting unto you, perish for loving the accepting seats and the greatest and great and matches matches. That's 43. She's gonna read 44, right. but you're gonna read Verse 44. Right. It says, Woe unto you, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are as graves which appear by, and the men, the men that walk over them are not aware of them. Amen. 12, verse 1. In the meantime, when they were gathered together, an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they trod one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, First of all, beware the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. My Lord, my Lord, have mercy. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to another Sunday School lesson. Thanks to all the guys reading scripture and the translations that we have. And uh, thanks to Brother Halloway for the extra uh, scripture. Okay, uh, today's lesson is Jesus confronts hypocrisy. So there's a lot of that going on in the world today. Uh, devotion reading is from 1 Samuel 15, 19 through 23. And the, uh, the main lesson is from Luke, short lesson, chapter 11, verses 37 through 44. So without further ado, we have an opening prayer. Now let's pray. Heavenly Father, we bow before thee to give you the thanks and the praise and glory and honor. We thank you for allowing us to come together in your house one more time. So wherever we may, we may be, oh Lord, we want to come together and be one in the spirit, one in the Lord, so we can give you the praise, Lord, and honor, because you're worthy. King of kings and Lord of lords, pray that you have mercy on us, cleanse us of our sins, renew a right spirit within us, in Jesus' name. We pray, oh Lord, that we can concentrate on you and put you first in all things so that you direct our paths. We pray, oh Lord, that you use me right now to give a word so that the flock can be fed, oh Lord, so that Hallelujah. Man does not live by being alone for every word that proceeded from your mouth, O Lord. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in our sight. My Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Church, say amen. Amen. So uh, I want to uh, just go over the devotional reading. It's from 1 Samuel chapter 15. In the study Bible, that whole chapter, the, the title of it is The Lord Rejects the First King of Israel. So uh, Saul. So the prophet Samuel didn't understand it initially, but uh, what had happened, so he did have the victory, but they used the spoil when the Lord said, utterly destroy everything once you have that victory. 
So the men of Israel said, well, shoot, we could use this form. We can use their cattle and sacrifice to the Lord at, at Geigel. And uh, that's not what the Lord wanted. But he wants you to follow instructions. He wants you to follow instructions holy. So holy as in W-H-O-L-O-Y. So anyway, we, we want to uh, make sure that uh, whatever the Lord tells us to do, we do it fully. Hallelujah. And not leave nothing undone. So remember, even with Adam and Eve in the garden, hey, Adam was there to address the garden, but the Lord said, what? Do not eat of the one tree, the uh, tree of good and evil. But Adam ate of that one tree. Now, hey, he might have done everything else right, but he violated the law. Hallelujah. And so death came. So to one man, Adam, that was one of our previous lessons. So uh, anyway, so 1 Samuel, uh, uh, 1 Samuel 15, the Lord rejects Saul. And Saul was rejected because he didn't follow the instructions holy. So let us follow the Lord's instructions holy. And that's just where uh, uh, the, the keys in. Uh, obedience is better than sacrifice. So we'll just keep that in mind as we go through this lesson. So Luke chapter 11, verses 37 through 44. And as he spake, a certain Pharisee besought him to dine with him. And he went in and sat down to meet. So this is Jesus being uh, requested to eat with the Pharisee, with the Pharisee here. And uh, he goes over to the Pharisee's house. So uh, we in the world today where there's a lot of lawyers and stuff like that. We see the commercials all the time. Half the commercials now look like half to me is like pharmaceuticals. And almost other half is like different uh, lawyers doing different things. Uh, you know, say, hey, I'm going to protect my clients. I can get you so much money. But if you have an injury, so I don't know, I'd rather have my health and strength. Uh, you can find out. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you know, the lawyer's job sometimes, you know, he got to, whatever uh, evidence supports his client, that's his, that's his, his strength uh, to use to defend his client, whether uh, on, regardless of what side he, he's on. So, uh, but God knows the hearts, the, the thoughts and intents of the heart. So uh, Hebrews 4.12 say what the word is, is sharp, sharper than a two-edged sword. So, but at the end, the end of time, when the Lord separated the goats and the sheep, hey, we, we want to be on the sheep side. Hallelujah. So, just moving on. 38. When the Pharisees saw it, he marveled he marveled that he had not first washed before dining. So, you know, you know these guys, they, they sit in the cheap seats and everything else, and they, they get the respect of the people. And it's like, hey, well, look, we, we wash our hands before we uh, handle our food, and before we do this here, we do this. We have these uh, certain rituals, or maybe this is how we do it. Hey, but Jesus said, okay, we're dealing with the outside, but what about the inside? So that's what God sees, and that's why uh, David was selected as the second king, because God saw the inside. Everybody else looked at the outside of his brothers. God said, uh -huh, let me see what's inside the heart, because that's what counts. 39, and the Lord said unto him, Now do ye Pharisees make clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but your inward parts is full of ravening and wickedness. So it's one thing, you know, like even at a grave site, yeah, it's one thing to whitewash the tomb. Yeah, and that looked pretty, huh? But hey, what's, in, what's inside that? <laughs> what's underneath that? And, you know, dead bones, dry bones, and everything else that go with that. So the, the bottom line is, that's how you look at these Pharisees. Okay, well, you wash your hands and you clean on the outside. You look like you got nice clothes, maybe, you know. But hey, but what's on the inside? So hey, if it's sin, hallelujah. That's wickedness. That's bad. And then if you still act in a certain way, and that's even bad, so uh, even worse. So, uh, moving on. Uh, verse 40 says, You fools, did not he that made that which is without make that which is within also? So, bottom line that, Jesus knows us inside out. Inside out. So, he knows those secret parts that nobody else knows. But Jesus knows that. So, just keep that in mind. 41, but rather give alms of such things as you have, and behold, all things are clean unto you. So once again, they look at the outside. 
So remind me some of those commercials where, hey, this uh, cleaner can clean the outside, but we need that deep cleaning for this. Uh, they still have bacteria or whatever, you know, microorganisms that you can't see. Well, like bleach, you know, it can clean things that we can't see. A lot of things are microscopic, but hey, you know, I'm just saying, so with us, the inside is, is, is hidden. So, you know, nobody can see that. And then, hey, secret parts, nobody saw you do that last night, huh? But the Lord saw you. So remember, uh, Philip under the fig tree. Just just keep that in mind as we go uh, along our way here. Verse 42 says, But woe unto you, Pharisees, for ye tied mint and rue and all manner of herbs and pass over judgment and the love of God. These ought ye have done, and not to leave the other undone. So set your priorities. The bottom line is we want to treat people right. We want to show love. And, and, a, and what's up in your heart, it's going to come out. So if they got a lot of hatred in your heart, oh my goodness, you know. But if they got a lot of love in your heart, you know, you, you, you show love. So the tree is known by its fruit. So if it's a bad tree, oh man, you come bad stuff coming out of it. If it's a good tree, oh man, it's a nice, beautiful fruit coming out of this one. So, but God can change our hearts. So even if we are bad and wicked or whatever, when we come to Christ, Lord, help me. I, I'm, I'm sorry. You know, repent of our sins and, and come to him humbly. Uh, my Lord, hallelujah. He forgive you and you wash clean. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So thank you, Lord, for your greatness, for your mercy. Hallelujah. Verse 43. Woe unto you, Pharisees, for ye love the uppermost seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets. So once again, that's a sign of pride. Oh, well, this is what you like? I mean, be careful because you chest starts sticking out like a rooster and it's like, well, hold on. You know, because a lot of things God do for us and then we go over there because we were the, we were the man on the scene, so we try to get that credit. Well, hey, I did this here, but really the Lord did it. So it's like, well, thank you, Lord, for, for doing this and allowing me to be here to have it done. Probably do you start acknowledging God and, and, and what he's doing in your life and you'd be surprised the even more success that you will have that it looked like you had that it looked like you doing, but ah, he's doing it. Because wisdom, it comes from him, right? With Solomon pray for wisdom. And once he got it, well, he was one of the greatest kings, one of the wisest kings in all of Israel. Last verse is 44. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you, for ye are as graves which appear not, and the men that walk over them are not aware of them. So you know, because of the hidden things, you know, like once once you uh, establish a grave, you bury in something. And then once, if, if the grave is not marked, hey, nobody knows that from regular grass or whatever. So uh, a lot of men just walk over it. So it's like, hey, okay, well, uh, you know, all these hidden things done, you know, people start walking over people. And that's not what it's about. Remember, God said, what? He gave us only two commandments. Hallelujah. The simple five of Ten Commandments, he said, what? Love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and what? Love your neighbor as yourself. If you do these two commandments, all the rest of the commandments lie on these. So if we love God, we're not going to do certain things. We're not going to use somebody and misuse somebody. Hallelujah. If we love our neighbor as ourselves, oh, you know, if you love your wife, you're not going to smack them. You know, you're going to love them. Hallelujah. A sugar smack, you know, a kiss or something, but I mean, not a, a physical smack. So the bottom line is, hey, we want to love each other like God said to love each other and obey his commandments. Hallelujah. But it, it all comes around Jesus. Hallelujah. If we accept Jesus, hallelujah, into our lives and just say, Lord, change me. I know what a wretch I am, what a wicked wretch I am, because Jesus can clean us up from the inside out. We need him to come into our hearts. And make us a new creature in Christ. And you'd be surprised the differences. And the things that you think you're giving up, uh, you get you gaining a whole lot more. Now I'm gonna just say this for example because we got some issues going on around here. But sometimes sometimes guys try to find an answer in drugs and alcohol. And it's like, no, the answer's in this word, it's in God's word, because we need wisdom. We need to solve the problem, not pacify the symptoms of the problem. Hey, if you drink or you do drugs, guess what? You, you hide for a minute and it seems like you're feeling good. You look back, the problem is still there. Oh, it even multiplied, right? So, but when we apply God's word to our daily work of life, then it's different. Now we got a solution. Now God, if God fights your battles, or you're on a winning side. And that's going to be a wrap on that. So, 
hey, you'd be surprised on what you can take and what you can do when the Lord is on your side. But what do you want to say? Lord, I can do all things through you who strengthen me. Uh, Philippians 4.13, but what? We can do nothing because he's the uh, the vine. We are the branches. So if you pull a branch off the tree, oh, it's going to die. So, hallelujah, he is the life source. So let's stay connected to the Lord. Hallelujah. As we walk our daily life, walk our life, acknowledge him in all our ways. Let him direct our paths. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Uh, we're going to have our final prayer. Let us pray. Okay. Heavenly Father, we desire to be holy people. Take away our needs to impress others and impress on us on us the image of your Son, Jesus Christ. Show us how we might be gorgeous with our gifts with our giving our giftings in other in order that we might love you and our neighbor. In Jesus' name, your son, Jesus. Amen. 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 Dejamos ser personas santas. Quita nuestra necesidad de impresionar a Dios. E imprime en nuestra la imagen de tu Hijo Jesucristo. Nuestro, muéstranos cómo podemos amarte a ti y a nuestro prójimo. En el nombre de tu Hijo Jesús. Amén. 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 Thank you for our prayers. All right. Uh, once again, thank you now for our prayers, for our readings, for our few translations that we do have. Uh, this is a real short lesson, so we didn't have a bunch of the different Bible verses like we usually have from uh, the other uh, versions of the Bible. So uh, we just kept it with the King James Version with our uh, translations. But uh, thank you guys for your participation uh, this time and uh, previous uh, uh, lessons that you guys been involved in. So uh, I suggest, uh, that, you know, especially if you have a cell phone, just subscribe to the channel, and that way you don't miss any of the weekly lessons. Uh, the next lesson uh, is Jesus silences critics. So that's going to be uh, from Luke chapter 14, 1 through 6. So that's another short lesson there. Uh, the devotional reading is from Hebrews chapter 4, 1 through 10. So Hebrews 4, 1 through 10. And then Luke 14, 1 through 6 is the lesson. So thank you all for joining us. And we just pray that uh, you know, this word be a blessing to you. And you know, hopefully uh, it, it makes some life changes at home as well as at work. And we pray for you guys' safety uh, out there uh, in offshore ministry, wherever you may be, and the safety of all our loved ones at home. We thank all our family and friends for joining us as well. It's a blessing to hear. Word from the Lord. In Jesus' name, be blessed. Amen.